Hello friends, welcome to my channel and explore the world of Microsoft Azure. My name is Rajneesh Kaushik and I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer, Consultant and an Enterprise Architect. For more latest videos and blogs, you can always log into my website rajneeshkaushik.com and subscribe to my blog. Please do not forget to subscribe my channel and click the bell icon so you don't miss the latest videos. Do like, share and comment. In today's uh, fast-paced development environment, uh, sharing and distributing the code could be a very daunting task. And while there are many methods to distribute your code in Python, the most efficient and popular method is distributing it via uh, and packaging it via the Python wheels. In this video, we are going to discuss what is Python wheel, how to create a Python wheel library from scratch in PyCharm, and deploy it in Databricks and use the code packaged in the Python wheel. So let's get started. Spin the wheel, Python packages meets the Databrick. So this is the agenda for today's session. What are Python wheels? Benefits of using Python wheels? And when to use Python wheel libraries? Then we will jump to creating a Python wheel and I will explain it first of all the conceptual way and then I will jump to a demo. What are Python wheels? Python wheels are actually built in archive format which can be helpful to speed up your process of installing the Python packages. And Python wheel essentially is a pre-compiled package which allows for faster packaging, installation and building and installing these packages from the source file which is your python code the wheel format is designed where it can contain many different files which is necessary to run your package which includes your different binaries and dependencies around it python wheel has a whl extension and it can be installed with a package management tool like pip so what are the benefits of using python wheels why do we need to install python wheels first of all it is it enhances your development speed because it is a pre-compiled and uh, which means that your installation process will be much faster as compared to you know deploying your source code directly and this is very beneficial because when you uh, when because compilation time is reduced so it's a pre-compiled second thing it is very easy to use you can just pip you know install the libraries you know with the pip install library name and there is no need to worry about missing dependencies because if one library requires another library and it that dependent library will automatically install with the help of uh, python wheels it's portable which means that it is easy for uh, you to port it distribute it and distribute it as a single package and this helps you to package it in different environments whether it is linux windows right where you don't have to worry about uh, you know packaging it into different different environment once you package it you can directly use it and uh, it will automatically compile based on the target system so it's very portable it reduces the risk because there is um, you know less risk of end users encountering the error because you already made sure that you know your package is compiled and it is reliably distributed it is compatible because it it has a python package index pypy and which means that it is easy to publish your packages and make them accessible to your community in python community uh, you can make it available okay when to use python wheels so there are the different scenarios where python wheel could be very helpful first of all if you are managing a large project and the, your project has multiple dependencies and it is because of these dependencies it requires a long time to compile that then in that case you know if you want to significantly increase their development speed then what you can do you can you know do the installation with the uh, python wheels another uh, use case is when you want to distribute your code uh, distribute your code um, to a you know large set of users and you know you want to increase the adoption rate of your package so in that case you can use python wheel because it helps you to um, you know use these packages by the end user to install very quickly and test it then another advantage is platform 
uh, specific packages. If you have a binaries, you compile binaries which is very specific to a platform and you, you can use Python wheel because Python wheel has a dependency checking mechanism and based on that dependency it can install the particular uh, binaries easily. Then another uh, uh, use case is when you have an environment isolation. If you have a Python wheel library which require a specific set of Python version and you want ki your Python library does not have to interfere with another Python library or another Python environment then this kind of environment isolation can be made easy if you use Python wheels. Then another um, uh, use case is when you want ease of deployment right because if you are a develop, devops administrator or system administrator and you want to automate your python packages across different different systems in dev qa and prod environment then python wheel offers a reliable and quick option for this okay so now let's understand how do we create a python wheel library so first and foremost whenever you create a python wheel you need to follow certain directory structure and in pycharm this structure is very 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 easy uh, what you need to do, you need to create a Python package and once you add a Python package, the Python package is called a module in Python word. So that module, uh, you know, suppose my module name is my module, then it will create a module name and inside that it will create some init.py file and then some Python code. So you, you can create any name of this code, right? And then init file. init file is a default file which is required inside this module. And then outside this module, there is a setup.py code which need to be there. And readme file is a file where you provide your information about the project. What are the, what does this project does? So this is, this is an optional file, but these files are mandatory files. So when you put this uh, code, there is a setup.py file. In setup.py file, you will put this code and this code, you can customize it like in this case, I am putting the name as, as a Contoso and name of my email ID as a Contoso.com. You can put your company name, license information, package information. The, in this case, the package name is Contoso package. And this requires a setup tool and PySpark to be available. So this is a installation. Whenever you install this module, it will require a PySpark and setup tools to be available. And it will import the OS and setup tool and it will also import these packages. So this setup file makes sure that your package information, metadata of the package along with the necessary information and then what are the tools required for installation is captured. So this is your setup.py. Now let's understand how your init.py file works. So init.py file actually, uh, what does it do? It, it says that it needs a file called root dot rule engine in the root directory right so in my case i just shown you some code dot py so for example you can take this some code dot py as a rule underscore engine dot py so it's it is saying that from dot rule dot engine that means this is a this is your file name from python and you import these two methods these are the two methods which is captured inside this file and in this is our file uh, some code.py and I will show you a demo and it will be more clear. So this is a very very important file where you put a init.py uh, init.py file. This is the content of init.py file. Then uh, let's understand what we should keep inside the python wheel code. In, in my case I have shown you this sa, some code.py so what is that some code.py contains? So in my example, what I have done, I have captured two different methods, get rules and get quarantine rules. These are the two methods I have captured and these methods I'm going to call from my Databricks environment. So what does it contains? First of all, I have imported the PySpark session. Uh, then I have imported the columns and SQL functions. And most important part of this code is spark session.builder.get or create. That means this whenever this code will run, it will either access the already created session of the Spark or it will create a new session if it does not find a new one. And then the remaining part of the code in this my example, I have I have kept a very simple code where I have I am actually um, 
sending a two different parameters the table name in rule table that means um, uh, the, there is a table name in the rule table and then rule table name inside the rule table name there is a table name given so i am just capturing these two information and then sending it for the um, for creating a data frame and then data frame i am actually filtering this column based on the table name and then you know whatever value comes i am going to return it so this is what the, this whole um, pro function does similarly uh, if you see this another function um, again this function also does the same thing but again this uh, returns uh, not value you you know it, it it adds a not value and then join join the all the rules and then uh, you know it, it joins the not value inside it so it is opposite to this one get rules and get quarantine rules which means that it actually quarantine the rule which is captured in the rule table so for the sake of simplicity just understand that you need to capture this particular line and after that you depending upon your logic of your code you can capture it for my case i have captured this way but you can capture differently so this is your python wheel uh, package so let's jump to a demo now okay so this is my pycharm file and uh, pycharm i have created a empty project inside that when i come here and i say python package and it asks me which package name you want to keep so in my case i have kept the package name as contoso the moment i created a contoso package it created me i need py file so i need py file i have added dot rule engine and in this case if you see rule engine is already there that's why i kept from dot rule engine and inside the rule engine i have two methods get rule and get quarantine rules so let me show you that get rule and get quarantine rule methods are there that's why i have imported this in this this is very very important otherwise your code will not run as explained that we need to have a spark session method otherwise your spark uh, code will not work and that's it after that what you need to do you will come here and then you will run this command line python setup.py bdist underscore wheel okay so obviously you need to install this tool python wheel uh, library you need to install uh, wheel utility and you know you need to install so once you install it and then you run this it will automatically create a uh, python wheel and this python wheel will be created in a distribution folder which is here so this is your python wheel already created now so what i will do i will use this python wheel in the from the distribution folder and this is my python wheel which is created now i am going to deploy this python wheel in the databricks cluster environment so let me show you that this is my cluster and very easy to install the python wheel here i will come here install new python wheel and then i will drop this library here and then i will say install so since i already installed it i am not going to install it again so this is already installed that's why you are able to see this library here now let's see how do i test this library very simple i will say pip install uh first of all it is a uh, percentage pip install contoso because this is a package name i have given and then here i am what i am going to do i am going to import this library and then i am going to import this uh, methods from the um from the uh, contoso package and then i am going to use this package so here i am creating a rule dict in rule dict i am actually call, calling contoso dot rule engine because that is a rule engine where the methods are kept and inside that get quarantine rule method is there in that current get quarantine rule method i have, I have a rules uh, inside the rule i have a claim summary library i have a claim summary table so from the rule table inside that there is a claim summary uh, table and i am going to get the all the rules from that particular table and then display it so this in this case it is going to 
display this value which means that my package is distributed and it is working fine so any developer who want to use this web library he can directly use this library with this code similarly i can call another rule in this case another rule uh, get rule method is there and i can call that get rule method as well so let me also show you what does this library looks like so as i told you that this is a rule file this is a rule table which i have passed and in this rule table there is a table name so what i wanted is that whatever the uh, table name is there suppose this is a claim summary this is another claim summary this is so what i want is that join of all this claim summary website is not null location state is not null everything combined together in and then um, you know put a not which is quarantine method and it will display it there so if, let me show you how does it display all these things if you come here and if you see this particular one it is actually uh, putting not and then these three claim summary related table and then putting a not because it is a quarantine method so it is putting not in between and then putting at the end again the not so this is how the whole um, get quarantine rule works so with this we have uh, deployed the python v library first of all we created the python v library deployed it into the database cluster and imported that package and started using it thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to you